In the weather today, a big derecho swept through North Texas yesterday morning. Those strong winds knocking out power. Well over a quarter million people in Texas without power right at this moment. As you can see on this map, quite a swath of outages down from Dallas into East Texas. 16% of Dallas County right now still without power this afternoon, down from 25% last night. Similar numbers, 5 to 20%, all through East Texas, right through here, down into Lufkin, Tyler. If you experienced effects from the storm or you know people that have, please leave a comment. Myself and others will be interested to know what happened in your area. So let's check it out. We go all the way back to Monday afternoon. Don't worry about this split in the middle. That's just kind of a demarcation between two temperature bands. This is all relatively clear air. But as we go into Monday afternoon, you can see these storms popping up over Dallas, producing quite a bit of hail throughout that area. Other storms pop up from Denton back to Wise County. And then we get in this warm advection pattern right here, a little bit further to the west, you're going to see some storms pop up right there. And those spread up into the Red River region from Lawton to Ardmore. We're getting a lot of outflow interaction, the air mass out ahead of it, very unstable. Those capes around 4,000 to 5,000 around Dallas, even late at night. And then you can see this derecho come together, starting out around Bowie, Texas, around Gainesville, right in this area here, and it sweeps southeast through the Dallas area about 6 a.m. on Tuesday and on down into East Texas throughout the remainder of the day. These storms started as hailstorms after 1 a.m. with reports of golf ball-sized hail around Lawton and Walters in Oklahoma. The first big wind swath started in Denton County after 5 a.m., winds over 60 miles an hour tracking into Dallas County. The derecho spread into East Texas towards Tyler. A second, weaker, outflow-driven complex developed south of Dallas, producing spotty damage down I-45 in Texas 19. By 2 p.m., it arrived in the Houston area. One fatality in the woodlands killed a worker at a home construction site. Houston Intercontinental Airport saw winds to 75 miles an hour. Here's a look at the afternoon weather map. A little bit of a break today. You can see some evidence of a frontal boundary from the southeastern U.S. into the southern plains. Some dry air has filtered into Texas. Dew points in the 60s, a big change from those upper 70s that we saw a couple days ago. Weak frontal system on the east coast right there around Virginia. Temperatures into the 80s on the Carolinas coast frontal boundary down into southern Georgia. And then we've got another strong Pacific weather system moving through the northern Rockies. Pan over and take a look at that. You can see that pool of cold air across British Columbia. Temperatures down into the 50s and even the 40s into the interior regions. Looks like about 55 at Vancouver, 60 around Seattle, and 62 at Portland. So certainly below average temperatures. Looking up there in Alaska, temperatures coming up a little bit into the 60s, almost 70. So that's certainly some very warm weather for that part of the country. And in Canada, continued cold temperatures in the teens and 20s. But down in the Northwest Territory, starting to get close to the 70 degree mark. There's that occlusion coming through the Canadian prairies and a dry, cold ridge across the Hudson Bay region into Ontario. The Maritimes looking mild, a cold front moving out to sea there, and the wraparound producing some clouds and precipitation in Labrador. Okay, so here we have the 500 millibar heights and vorticity, and we've also got the temperature on here as well. And this shows over the western U.S. troughing, in the central U.S. ridging, and warm air. And in the eastern U.S., we've got a broad area of troughing, cold air aloft, especially over Pennsylvania and Ohio. You can see that temperature gradient right there across Virginia. The polar front jet, this is not really the proper 
level to diagnose the polar front jet. But we can see some evidence of it right there in the northwestern U.S. and also through the northeast U.S. as well. In the central U.S., the winds have weakened quite a bit, down to 10 to 20 knots. But in the southern U.S., Texas, New Mexico, the southwest, the subtropical jet is still up there in the upper troposphere, about 250 millibars, looking at about 50 knots of flow today. And let's take a look at the forecast for tomorrow because we do have severe potential once again. The global models, specifically the GFS, the European, the ICON, have been doing reasonably well with the generalized forcing, the initiation areas. The small-scale details have been a major problem, so the WRF, the mesoscale models, have been really struggling. So I'm going to go with this for tomorrow just for the general overview. So we start out at 7 a.m., Bring this up to 1 p.m., let mixing do its work a little bit. And we see the moisture axis from Houston to Fort Worth and on up US 287 towards Wichita Falls and Vernon. So probably initiation areas in southwest Oklahoma, maybe the Cap Rock, and on up into northwest Oklahoma. It looks like a little bit of a dry line being indicated right through here and maybe a secondary dry line further south. Okay, so this is the area we're going to watch. It looks like the GFS kind of going for that idea, just west of the moisture axis. Then they've got this complex basically tracking right down it towards Dallas and Fort Worth. So I think we do have severe potential once again for tomorrow night. One of the principles we use in meteorology is continuity. If there have been no significant changes to the pattern, we continue to forecast much the same as what we've seen, which does raise the possibility of more wind damage. So what happened Tuesday was kind of an unusual event, and the chance of that happening twice in a row, very unlikely. However, we may see some localized severe weather along that axis as this complex moves to the southeast overnight. So that'll be moving into East Texas, feeding off of that moisture supply, and looks like the GFS kind of capping that southern end out there around Austin, Brownwood, and maybe Houston. A quick check of weather around the country, the northeastern U.S. They've got that cold air aloft. You remember that troughing across this region and the colder air all the way down towards Virginia in the upper levels. So in Pennsylvania, Ohio, some steep lapse rates aloft. We've got that cold air crossing the eastern Great Lakes into the Appalachians this afternoon. We're looking for highs today, only 66 at Pittsburgh and 68 at Cleveland, and a very showery pattern with that upper level low moving over that area. Wish we had that here in Texas. It keeps warming up to 90 degrees every day. Overnight lows tonight, however, quite pleasant down into the mid-40s across East Ohio and on over to Pennsylvania, looking for an overnight low of 43 at State College. In the southeastern U.S., a lot of clear skies, a little bit of convective debris over southern Alabama. But hot temperatures from southern Georgia down into Florida, they're looking for a high of 95 degrees at Tampa this afternoon. In the south-central U.S., the air mass is recovering. We've got precipitable waters about 1.5 to 2 inches across much of the state. The boundary layer, however, is drier. So there's just enough lack of ingredients to keep things suppressed. An SPC slight risk for southwest Texas in this area right here, Fort Stockton, Sanderson, Dryden, possibility of hailstorms later this afternoon. For tomorrow, storm hazards increase across much of north and northwest Texas and the Panhandles. The main threat, high winds. Heat advisories for the eastern Big Bend area, Marathon, Alpine, Right in this area, they're looking for 100 to 110 in the valleys. A lot of people get out there on the trails and they don't carry enough water. And that can get you into trouble pretty quickly. And there's those data plots from some of the Mesonet stations in southwest Texas. A little bit of a gap here around the Pecos River, but we can see dew points in the 60s flowing all the way to the Pecos River, maybe even just past it there with that 58 degree reading. Uh, in fact, yeah, Fort Stockton, 61. So that moisture is flowing westward. A little bit of upslope flow, strong heating, 
and the moisture, that's all going to combine to produce a chance of thunderstorms in the next few hours. Temperatures 105 there in the eastern Big Bend area, 100 at, uh, I think that's going to be Presidio, so certainly heating up this afternoon. Starting to see some of the first specks of convection on the higher terrain north of Marathon and north of Alpine. So that's probably where some of our convection will start. Same thing down south into Mexico. Then for the northern plains, much of that area under a slight risk. I went ahead and added that. That's going to be the area in yellow right here. Looking for storms to form on the higher terrain, especially along the front range right there around Cheyenne and Denver. That'll move out into the plains and interact with the moisture. The main threats will be uh, mostly wind and hail, but down south into Colorado, a very slight chance of tornadoes. There's a look at our initiation there around the Denver area. That's going to be Denver, the Front Range located north and south, just to the west of Denver, and some rather vigorous convection forming northeast of the airport. The southwestern U.S. looking pretty good this afternoon, but we're certainly laying on the heat. 100s back again for Phoenix and the Mojave Desert. There's the official National Weather Service forecast highs for this afternoon. Looking for 103 at Phoenix, 98 at Tucson, and 98 at Las Vegas. And in the northwestern U.S., a little bit more unstable as we get into that troughing coming on shore into the northwest states. Surprisingly, we do have bank full rivers in the Great Basin area right through here. That's going to be on the Humboldt River from Battle Mountain to Winnemucca. It is bank full and a flood advisory is in effect. Freeze warning for tomorrow night for the northeastern Washington area, including Colville and Deer Park. Spokane will be down to 37, OMAC 36. So let's take a look at that forecast going into tonight and into tomorrow. So obviously, severe weather prospects increase in Texas as that frontal system approaches from the northwest. The dry line becomes active and the moist advection continues from the Gulf. 850 millibar low-level jet sets up from west Texas into the high plains. We're going to be seeing those winds at 850, 30 to 50 knots. That was the ups having power interruptions. That's that uh, derecho damage. They're working on the lines throughout the town here. All right, so yeah, continuing. Those precipitable waters continue flowing north. And meanwhile, the 250 millibar flow increases to 60 knots out of the west in Texas. As mentioned, a large slight risk covering the panhandles, parts of north Texas, and we could see that MCS develop overnight. All right, so going into Friday, this is a little bit more ambiguous. It does look like there's some sort of frontal boundary, maybe an outflow boundary through parts of central Texas. Not sure exactly what's going to happen, but there will be support for additional storms. For the western U.S., a very hot pattern. Highs will be 105 at Phoenix, 102 at Vegas, 98 at Fresno, and 95 at Sacramento. That will continue through the weekend with a slight moderation but cool air continues across Washington, 35 degrees for Friday night at Spokane. We go into Saturday. That's going to be the first day of June. Looks like continued wet in Texas and Oklahoma. Not too sure about the upper level support for severe weather or thunderstorms. I mean, that could happen, but that's still a few days away. In the Rockies, some of the heat crosses the mountains right there. You can see the thermal ridging in the thickness field, the red lines, indicating that bulging right there. That's indicative of warm air in the mid and upper levels. So some warm temperatures in the Rockies. Looking for highs well up into the 80s through the central and southern Rockies. 91 degrees at Grand Junction. The overnight low for Salt Lake City Saturday night will be 62 degrees. That sounds like something from Texas or Louisiana. All right, going into Sunday, there comes another Pacific weather system cooling things off for the northern plains. And we'll just carry that into Monday and Tuesday real quick. Looks like some sort of disturbance moving up through the Mississippi River Valley into Kentucky and Ohio. 
for Tuesday, looking for a very hot day in the northeastern U.S., up to 85 at Burlington, 86 at Albany, some cool air crossing the northern plains during the midweek period, thunderstorms in the north plains, maybe a little bit of a break down there in Texas, but here comes another frontal boundary. We'll have to see what that does. This time of year, frontal boundaries, those are always a focus for development. And that's going to be the end of the period. I haven't really analyzed these in much detail, but that's going to leave us at June 8th. Looks very active once again for the Pacific Northwest. And if you think you have problems with the heat, take a look at northern India. This is about 10 hours ago. They had a record-breaking day in that part of the world, upper 110s throughout a large area. And this is not that desert heat that you get in Arizona and California. Much of this is with humidity. You can see these dew points right here in the 60s and 70s with air temperatures of 117 to 118. Delhi, 115 degrees. They held that for three hours. And reportedly, one of the automated stations in Delhi made it to 122 degrees. So that is certainly some terrible heat. Could that be a consequence of climate change? Well, feel free to post in the comments and discuss with others. And that will be all for our Wednesday edition of Forecast Lab. We'll be back for another episode on Friday. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for those of you supporting the program. And we'll see you back here in a couple of days. Hope you have a great Wednesday evening. Take care. Bye-bye.